match. The match is not, it's not easy. No, we didn't find it easy in South Africa. They came prepared. They came prepared for us. Yeah. And um, fortunately, we lost. But, but thank God, um, thank God I had the experience that we did. Yes. And yes, there is Tosin. I see you. Yeah, Joseph. Um, and we are just about ready to go. So, if you enjoyed part one and part two, just, you know what to do. Just, they, and, hey, big job. Yeah, Colin. Alpha. Great, great, great. Welcome <laughs> back. So, part three, <laughs> final part. Mm, your, your video is still doing, your, your video is still doing with you, with you. Really? Mm hmm it's still, the wheel is still turning. Okay, let me try something again. Let's see how that, that goes. Mm. I don't tell you, buy, buy one tree, put the tree inside your house and then climb, climb the tree. Makima, don't come back. Oh. Just climb the tree and your network will be fine. Very easy. Get a tree, climb the tree, and your network will be good. Abi? <laughs> well, you can see me, Shabi. Okay, looks like this network is doing some strong team. Strong, okay, yeah, I can see you now. I think your video is good now. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, we can hold on and see for the video. Where is my thingy? Looking for something. Find, okay, there you go. See all right, so I think we were who are we before we were so crazily interrupted. You can hear me now, Abi? Uh, yeah, I can hear you now. I lost it for a bit. Okay, so where were so, we? Well, there's a question. Yeah, but yeah, well, 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 we'll come back there. But let me ask there's a question from Makima. He says, How was it possible to convince? David Moyes to come to Nigeria for your testimony. Oh, wow. This is rolling back the years now. Yeah, it was very easy. I have a very good relationship with uh, my former manager, David Moyes. It was pretty easy. I just called him on the phone. And prior to that, I haven't even spoken to him in a while. And I said, yeah. and that's why when we have a good solid relationship, you know, it, it, it lasts the, uh, the test of time. As soon as I rang him up and I said, um, boss, you know, I'm bowing out the game and I'll, I'll, I'll like you to come to Nigeria to, to be present at my testimony. He just said yes, because he had the Champions League the following day. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. And then we had this issue of visa and everything. No, he was, um, you know, I owe him a lot of thanks. You know, it was very easy. It was just a player talking to his coach. So we still had mm -hmm. that connection and that relationship. And as soon as I called him up on the phone, you know, he didn't he didn't wait a second. He was just like, he's done and he's coming to Nigeria. You know? oh, wow. So it was, that, it was pretty easy, yeah. Hmm. See, that's what happens when you have a good relationship. Just like I just called you yesterday and said, let's do a live video. And you're like, yeah, sure, let's do it. Absolutely. You know, the relationship, you know, is, is everything. Because, you know, life evolves and revolves. People move everywhere around the world. But when you have a solid relationship, just like you said yesterday, you hit me up on the phone. I was like, let's do it. You know, I know other people that will call and I was like, you know, you look for what to do. We're all busy. But that's why, you yeah. know, when you're close to people, you do the day full for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So let, 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 let's talk about the current team now. I mean, I think when we, we left off with you talking about, you know, um, how team people play as a team, you have individual players. You know, we, we came up from talking about, um, you know, the best squads that you played with, you know, and we talked about how yeah. those other squads were good, but they were a team. While these ones were more like... Um, individual um, players. So when you look at the team that Delaroy is building now, he has built, I mean, he's full of young players that he has developed 
from um, when he started coming in. Um, how far do you think this team can go? And you know, what's the best way to get them to fulfill their potential? Yeah, like um, you rightly mentioned, the coach has done well. He's been able to to put up a good team, and and also. When you look at the generation of, of players coming through now, we are blessed with enormous talent. You know, I'm sure we as coaches will get confused every time we're trying to put out a squad that will represent Nigeria. So that that we have in abundance is for them to be in, in top form, playing for their club, because you have to play to be at your, your peak, to be able to deliver your peak performance. So it's to make sure our players are injury-free, they are healthy, they are playing well for their club, when football is young. I think based on that is where you pick those that are going, the 11 players that are going to start. It's, it's, it's done by your performance and by the form that you are on. So going forward to achieve success as a team is more than just playing. It's about having a good team spirit, having a synergy between the players, the coaches and the officials. You know, even when there are internal problems, like, you know, we have to downplay it and be able to talk to ourselves to achieve the common goal. Mm -hmm. um it's not i always believe that um if you heard my interviews and you were in the media so you should know i'm always the believer or one of those that actually believe that a team should have experienced and younger players mm -hmm. you can you can't just go into tournaments with just young players and expect that you're going to win you can't go into tournaments with uh like a world cup and expect you're going to win with young players so our players are also getting more experience now. The younger ones are now older ones when I was playing. So experience is always important. Why you need the younger ones with the energy and everything that they bring to the team. So it's a blend of young and experienced players. But most importantly is to make sure that you have a bunch of players that you've kept for a couple of years without changing too much. You know, in our earlier conversation, I did tell you what happened to my era. A player comes in and is out, the next one is coming in. So a player that has a bad game doesn't mean he's a bad player. Uh -huh. That's my opinion. You can have two average games, but you can you can pick yourself up. Because we that are played that understand football know that you cannot be judged by one or two two performances. And that has been the case maybe before Roa came in. I don't I don't know what has happened with his team, but definitely within my era, I've seen a player had one bad game and he wasn't called back. So that has to stop and the player, we have to build a structure, keep the team for a longer time so that we can achieve success with the national team. Uh, yeah, I think that, 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 that's a very good point because, I mean, people tend to look at it, like, oh, one bad game and they pile on somebody and then it becomes, it disappears and the person is nowhere to be found. So, yeah, I, I think in some ways, I mean, we've got to give Rob credit. He's, he's done that even when... I mean, they said, I mean, look at Igalo, for instance. He went to the World Cup. Igalo had, um, what, not, he, he had a good World Cup. It's just that, I mean, against Argentina, he missed some chances. And then people started abusing him. Uh, some people were sending him death, death threats and all sorts of things, you know. And well, even when he said he wasn't going to play anymore, Rob called him and said, no, you know what? I need you. I, I, you still have to come back. And he came back, played the game, was top scorer for African National Cup qualifying, top scorer at the Nations Cup also. So, yeah, it, it's a very good point you make about you know um, keeping players together and then um, believing in, um, in in players and their, and, their, and their abilities. Yeah, I think it's it's very important because sometimes these players we go through phases and patches of our career. Sometimes you're playing your best football, and in Nigeria, when we are used to success, let's. Say, oh, okay. Go to auntie. Go to your room or go to the boys' room. Okay. Yeah, go to the boys' room. That is on the phone. Okay, go to auntie. Yeah, so that's so that's what happens. You understand? Like, it's kind of it's kind of um. There are things that happen in the national team sometimes that you have to you have to give credit to coaches that are able to convince players. Just like yeah. you rightly mentioned, Igalo, he didn't have because of we are, we Nigerians and Africans we expect too much. When you set a standard, then immediately you drop. 1% from that standard, you start getting criticism, people start judging you. Like you said, he had a good World Cup, just not the Argentina game. And then people start calling for, for him to, to come out of the national team. So credit to the manager, Gennad Roa, for being able to convince him and also the FA, because they played a role. He has decided that, oh, the atmosphere is not good for me anymore. I want to quit. It's not easy to convince that player, but... The federation mm -hmm. and the coach has been able to do that, and credit to the player, because if he left the national team on that level, he wouldn't have been enjoying the success that he's enjoying now. 
He went to AFCON mm -hmm. after then and became the top scorer of AFCON. Understand? That's credit to him being resilient as well and, and having a strong mentality. So it, it works both ways for the players and also for the for the national team. But I'm I'm glad you use the Gallo as an example. Players as well shouldn't always feel that you have a bad tournament or a bad game that that's the end of your career. You know, and those are the things that I bring in because I, I know the game. It happened to me. I've also played. So I will always I look at what you have and what you can deliver. You not doing it that moment doesn't mean it won't come in the future. So long as, but what is most important is you have to keep your standard high with your club because that's where you spend the majority of your time. If you are able to do very well for your club, the national team should come calling. And then when you come to the national team because you are a top player and you've been performing almost week in, week out, it gives you a chance to have an edge over others. When I was playing at Everton, it looked like it was an automatic share because that was the Premier League. So when I come in, I, I played most of the game. So when I come into the national team, automatically, in my head, I know that if I show the same attitude in training, I'm going to be picked for the game. So that's, that's how it works. Hmm. Well, it's, it's not easy, eh? Football, football, football is tough. Yeah. <laughs> football, so, football, people make it complicated. Especially with decision making, but football is is, is so easy. It's, it's a universal thing. It's, it's a language. When you see somebody that can ball, you will know this person can play. But another thing on the management side is that person is not giving you what you expected. You should also be aware and be the hardest part is out the best out of somebody. And that's where the man management comes in. And not, not, not everybody can do that. No, not not everybody is. There's a difference between coaching and man and man manage, and the manager and man management. Some people do have both. Some people have just one. You understand? My experience, mm -hmm. I thought that there are things that people could have done better, especially for those that played the game to the highest level. You understand mm -hmm. the psychology of the players. You mm -hmm. understand because there is nothing that any player is doing today in the national team that we haven't done. So when you see that happening. Why don't you try and, you know, make a level playing ground for everybody and make sure those things are resolved? You understand? You know, because yeah. there are players that are not playing. There are, sorry, go on. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm listening. There are, play, there are players that, you know, maybe might not be having a regular time that they think they deserve. Mm -hmm. You understand? There are some that would think they deserve to be called up to the national team. I believe the national team is open for everybody. You might have a squad of 30, 35, 40 players. But like we know football, you know, one is out, injury happens, suspension comes, and, and, and you get your chance. So it's how you manage everybody and, and talk to them. You know, I'm a, I'm a living example of everything I'm saying. You understand? It doesn't mean both is for the players and also for the coaches. It doesn't mean because you're not playing now, you're not going to play tomorrow, but it's how it's being handled. You know, that is that mm -hmm. is one thing that I am very concerned about. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. And, and it takes a lot of um, discipline to to, um, to handle that because it's, it's not easy at all. Yeah. And I think from the from this question is to you, you know, from the media perspective as well, I think you guys need to also... Because... Winning laurels for a national team in, 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 requires everybody's hands to be on the desk. Mm -hmm. Understand? Yeah, it's not about because you hear certain things and everybody is, sometimes you don't know if people are promoting it for their personal interest. When it comes to mm -hmm. national interest, it's like what is going on now? The pandemic. Everybody is shutting down. Everybody knows what we have to do. Football is mm -hmm. one thing that we see in Africa as a culture. Our national team is our pride. When Nigeria is playing well, everybody is happy. So if the media can, they're, they're doing very well. But this error that I'm coming in and we are looking like, okay, gonna run and his team finished um, last Nations Cup third place, semi finalist. Can yeah. we do one better? The last World mm -hmm. Cup, we finished round of 16. Can we do one better? It, it requires yeah. everybody to understand and their hands should be on the same desk. We should have a common goal and a common direction. And that's, uh, that's, that's my question. It's interesting you say that because that's exactly what uh, Genaro was talking to me about the other day, that everybody has to pull in the same direction. Anyway, I've, I've got a question here from Adam. He says, 
apart from Drogba, who else? Is, okay, no, let me leave. Who is the toughest striker you played against? The toughest? Yeah. I would say... Uh, African striker or in general? Okay, let's do let's do two. let's do general and then let's do African strikers. That's if, if the top one let's do general, then we'll do African strikers. Okay, I think in the in the in the world there are two people that I thought okay could cost me. I don't know if, if Messi classified as a striker or a white yeah. player or yeah. Then he, he has he has to be Messi because um He's a bit ahead of Rob. I would have said Robbie King, former Tottenham player, the Irish player. Yeah, uh, yeah. He was clever, and he plays the mm -hmm. same position as Messi. We had a drop off the striker. So mm -hmm. I'm the kind of person that I like to see you because I can I can mark you and put you in my pocket. <laughs> but sometimes because of the way <laughs> because of the way these strikers move and their size, they come from everywhere. Sometimes they are missing mm -hmm. in the game, and the next thing they pops up and they mess you around. So. Messi, yeah. I would say, because a few times we played against him, he made the difference, and we were, I was unable to like get hold of him. You already, we already knew that he was going to be the problem. We knew that if we took mm -hmm. him out, we have a better chance. But like mm -hmm. I said, he failed out the game. He comes back <laughs> and, then, and then he does the, like, the damage. Like a coach. <laughs> yeah, you understand. So watching him again, uh, 2018 World Cup against Nigeria. I was filming. I was like, this guy again? <laughs> again Nigeria had that game under control. But that's, that mm -hmm. tells you what great players can do. Ronaldo maybe, yeah. but Ronaldo, because of his physique and his size, if he plays mm -hmm. as number nine, it was easier for me to mark him. But when I played against him, he was more of a white player. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, then for Africa... Mm -hmm. Then for mm -hmm. African striker... For African striker, I would say Didier Drogba. Okay. I think Didier Drogba had something there. Not skill. He had presence. He can head the ball and all that. But for some reason, he ends up scoring important goals when mm -hmm. it matters. No, not against yeah. national team. I'm saying a time with Everton. Yeah. You understand? He cost me the chance of winning the FA Cup 2009. <laughs> you know, it's how the game... We are leading, and the next thing you know, he comes up in a big occasion. You know, mm. so he's uh, directly mm. against me, but, you know, he's done my team some damage. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so that, that, that would be that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, Drogba, yeah. Drogba is uh, as, de as dangerous as they come. So, and then um, somebody says, uh, your first goal for Everton, you were so excited. So, why, why was that? Sorry, I lost you. Yeah, sorry, sorry after that, you, that, that, that you were very excited when you scored your first goal for Everton. Oh, yeah, I think I can remember that. You know, every first goal means something special. Mm. And especially for me as a defender. You know, Everton then was built. We had this structure of keeping a clean sheet, trying to be defensively yeah. structured all the world. That's how we drilled. You know, so for mm -hmm. a defender to go up front and get a goal is an added bonus. My goal used to be keeping a clean sheet. When I keep a clean sheet, I feel I'm the man of the match and the goal scorer. But if I can go mm -hmm. to the opposition's half and get a goal, mm -hmm. oh, that's a huge bonus. So my first goal for Everton was special because Everton is a big part of me. I love the club. I came. They took me very well. The fans were happy with me. It was, it was, it was a special moment. So anything I could do that they don't see very often, was special and scoring goals was was one of those. <laughs> oh, interesting. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. There, there's nothing as good as um, scoring a goal. Maybe maybe one of you, I'll, I'll come and score one against you. So that's me too. Um, I'll, I'll celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every time I score, but sometimes they don't let me celebrate. You're trying to celebrate and people hold you. You know, exactly. sometimes this striker shouldn't be greedy. They should let us defend and celebrate our own too. You understand? <laughs> you're running and they grab you everywhere, so you, you stop halfway. <laughs> because you're happy for you. Explain when, it, when it's a very important goal. Huh? Yeah. yeah. So I have this question from Joshua Perry on Facebook. He said, 
when Yobo started as a right back, I always thought he modeled his game after Kafu. But as a central defender, who did you model your game after? Uh, I didn't really have a model. I was just, you know, because I grew up in football, just enjoying football and having talent. You know, I wish I did that. I wish I had somebody that, you know, managed me or was there for me to say, look at this player, you can be like this person. I was just playing and enjoying my football. So basically, it was the knowledge from my coaches that carried yeah. me until I became Joseph Yobo that I could do things myself. So as a central defender, um, then I don't know if he was defensive midfielder or, or but I like Marcel Desai. Okay. You know, I like I like uh, I like the way he played, and and I thought we had the kind of he was aggressive, but he had he can play the ball. He has style. In my own era, the person another person that I thought okay maybe we have a bit of similarity was um, Rio Ferdinand. Okay, yeah, it's ball playing. Yeah, you know, Rio had the composure. He was a world class defender. He had the composure, can play the ball. So yeah, but I didn't really have someone that I would say I. I I modeled my game around that person. I was just enjoying it and, and playing my own style. It was a natural thing. It, it came mm. to me naturally. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Maybe we should have sent you to go and, and play and replace Vincent in goal. You know, maybe that would have. <laughs> Since you played, you played striker, you played midfield, you played defense, the next one should have been to go and play as a goalkeeper. Mm. Oh, no, that one I won. I can't dive. <laughs> I can't die. That's why I don't do a lot of tackles. My tackles can be counted with fingers. I don't really go to the ground, except I have to do it. So I don't think I could have been a goalkeeper. Yeah. But the rest of the other positions, I think, yeah. Yeah. And um, I think, I think I need to. Now, as a defender, you scored. I mean, how does it feel, you know, when you score an ungo? Because I remember one game where you, you scored this own goal and you were almost like, oh my goodness, like you were like, you want to dig yourself into the ground. Yeah, it's, you, you, you feel bad. You feel bad, especially when it could have been saved. Because that's one thing you learn, you learn from everything. And because, I, you know, when it comes to being a defender, everything taught me so much. The device taught me so much. Like we, we had this drill. So when you see something that happened, that could have been saved. I get really mad. If it's a natural thing that you can't do nothing about, of course, it's a mistake. But you're like, could you have said something to me to leave that ball? Because, you know, football is like a unit. Everybody's mm -hmm. playing together. So when I see that happening, that maybe you could have said, leave it, and I'll just leave the ball. Why put me under pressure to try and clear that ball and it goes in? It really makes me go yeah. mad. Because that, that incident could have been saved, and that's why it's a collective game. But apart from that, you always learn from your mistakes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, your team, Tim Cahill just joined. Say hi to him. Who is that? Tim Cahill, your former teammate. Who? Your former, your, 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 Tim Cahill, from, your Australian former teammate at Everton. Oh, Timmy. What's up, Timmy? <laughs> hey, brother. <laughs> no, Tim, yep. Tim is the... My time at, at yeah. Everton with Tim is, yeah. is something else. We have a history. Yep. He was like matches. He's not very big, but he can score headers. Tim, Tim is one of the best headers I ever, I ever saw in football. I'm telling you, I mean, like he's not a big uh, man, but that guy could. His head was almost he, like was like a magnet to every ball. His leap and then knowing where the ball is, the timing and knowing where the ball is going to come. Exactly. If we as a team, we are in search of goal. We just, we are just hoping that the ball drops to Tim because he's <laughs> just, know, he, he has there. that sense of of what to do and where the ball should go, you know. And, he, you know, looking at him, he's a very hard worker, you know, and he did a lot. He's a legend. He, he mm -hmm. did everything for Everton, man. You know, yep. I was there before him. I saw him when he came through, and, and what he brought for us was enormous. It was massive. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he just said, I think you can see his message, he said, always big respect for you. That's from Tim. <laughs> Thanks, Timmy. You know how we do it, you know. Yeah, that is celebration, that is celebration you know. That, that, that boxing celebration. <laughs> oh, man. I, you know, I'm at the back most times. I'm at the halfway. So by the time uh, Tim scores, before I get there, he's already done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, he had boxing, 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 bo
he had his signature that was unique. You understand? Like Tim came in with a different character, different, uh, and and I think he was a midfield player, and then he turned into like yeah. he was everything to us, and he was very versatile. Yeah, he was. Yeah. I remember him like with his plenty hair and. <laughs> Yeah, he says blessings to you and your family. It was an honor to play with you, King Yobo. <laughs> Thank you, Timmy. It was a pleasure playing with you. I hope one one more time. Maybe you should do his testimony as well. We'll share the pitch again or do something. He went to four yeah. North Coast. Can you imagine? Imagine that's, that's amazing, man. Oh, amazing. Stops. How many people is a legend in Australia? Is, uh... he is, he is a, not just Australia, he is a world legend. Four world cups, Colin. Four. It's not easy. Come on, not many people can do that. Not easy at all. Not many people years. can do that. Yeah. 16 years. Yeah. That's, that, I was that, very consistent as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's a role oh. model. He's a, he's a role model for a lot of people. Not just on the pitch. Understand because I know Tim, but off the pitch as well. I spoke mm. to Tim a couple of weeks ago as well, you know, when I became assistant coach. Yeah, so yeah. off the pitch as well, he's a role model. He's a, he's a top lad. He's a super guy. Trust me. Like you know me, I don't I don't rub it for people. I don't I don't do that. But Tim, yeah, any day, any time, he's, he's a top he's a top guy, top footballer for me, on and off the pitch. Cool. I'm not going to be surprised. He's going to be a great coach. Anything team gets into, that's the mentality. That's what I see. Anything team gets into, he's shooting for the top. Mm. With, and then we have um, Fesoji. Fesoji is also in the building. He played, you know, you, you guys were teammates at the World Cup 2002. Oh. Ah, Banana Man. Ban Bandana Man. You know, if you came out, if you came to the World Cup with the swag, now nah, tying his bandana, yes, so tying his yeah, bandana, you know, and all that. Uh, my British Nigerian wife brother, you know, no top guy, top guy, top guy, you know. Yeah, and Tim Tim Kayo says, I will, Tim Kayo says, I will come and play an exhibition game with you in Nigeria one day for a charity or anything you have going on. Tim will love you to oh. come to Nigeria. Oh, I love that team. I would, I would love to have you here, man. I would love to have you here. It would be a pleasure. Nigerians love you. You know, when we're at Everton, well, we, so you need to you. come here. Don't worry. I'll come and get you. You're coming to Nigeria. Hopefully this year, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So let's go for somebody just said, how about your brother Albert? Are you helping your football career? Sorry? I lost you. So somebody's asking a question about your brother Albert. Oh, Albert is in Holland. He, he did his coaching and all that. And he, you know, he played there, so he remained there. But he's doing well. His family is over there, and he's, he's doing well. Thanks for asking. Mm. Well, he comes around every now and then. Now, he's in Nigeria. He was around for Christmas, you know, and he stayed till the end of January before he went back. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, Agbele for real says, how are you looking forward to your first match as an assistant coach? Oh, wow. You know, when this whole cancellation came up, man, I was fuming. But then I had to understand it's for global, it's for a global interest. Because I've built myself, I've hyped myself, I've prepared my mind mentally for that, you know, for that game and all that. So I'm really excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. National team is like my baby. You understand? It's like my baby. I'm also happy that I gave them enough time. So I'm missing it now. But at some point, you get tired of doing something. When I quit yeah. the national team, I go for, I've done long time. I need a break. So now coming back, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited to see some of the players that I played with and to meet the manager and see everybody. I, I think it's something I have passion for. I love it. If I didn't, If I didn't have love for this, I would not do it. So I'm so excited that, oh, wow. Here is another big thing ahead of me with so much responsibility as well. And I'm just looking forward to it because of the talent that I see that we have in the squad. Let, let, let me take you back to... Um, I'm feel if you don't want to answer, you can jump it. It's a sad time, you know. Um, the point where your brother was kidnapped, that was the first time, you know, this thing really hit a Nigerian player that... I mean, you know, we, we used to have kidnapping back and forth back then, but, you know... <clears throat> This was the very first time that, you know, happened to somebody who was a footballer. You know, uh, Madame, Madame trying to get us, us out. <laughs> yeah. 
No, it was um, it was a sad time for me, and it was something new as well. That, you know, I, I was shocked that it happened. I was shocked that it happened, but you know, I didn't really know what to expect then. But when it happened, I was also happy that everybody rallied around, and it brought me closer to certain things as well. But the most important thing was um, I did question myself that oh, why is it happening. You understand why would people do such a thing? Okay, I'm playing for the national team, maybe, but you know, when things like this happen, it's no respect of process or what you do or who you are. The people that are behind this do this for for their own selfish reasons. So, uh, but I was happy that even the government and people, everyone, everyone was supportive and all that. And my brother came out, you know, looking looking all right. Nothing bad happened. So it was just a bad experience that could have affected me. And also thanks to everything, because uh, they were really behind me then. They were very supportive, you know, the chairman, the coach, like, you know, they knew how 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 I felt and how important it was for me. And, and they were very supportive. Even while I was in Nigeria, the chairman was always in touch and everything. So it was it was a sad moment, but it was also special to see how people can, you know, can relate with your problems and be supportive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and on the basis of that experience, you know, how do you advise current players, you know, for them and their families to keep safe and for, for so that it doesn't happen to them? Because, of course, we should happen with a few players after that. What, what kind of advice do you give them, somebody who has been there? It's, it's, it's difficult, Colin. Like, in, in life, like, no matter who you are and where you live, this, these things are done with information. And because of the position that we are in, you cannot satisfy everybody that is around. So somebody some, somewhere that knows you very well is always involved. They cannot operate without the information. So regardless of where you live, if you move to a big city, somebody that is not very comfortable or feeling that you owe them something, you're not doing enough for them. So it happens in a funny way but what i know from my experience is someone that is close is selling an information that is vital for the people to operate so it's, it's hard to stop that because we always have people around us yeah true very very true very true uh, let, let, let's come to the epl now um liverpool are on the verge of winning their first title in 30 something years you know and then all of a sudden this thing goes as, a, as, as somebody who is and ever to the core, you know, would you like to see Liverpool win the title or would you prefer the EPL to just cancel it and let Liverpool doesn't win the title? <laughs> oh, this, this question, I'm going to let my son Joey answer it because I don't know why he loves Liverpool and I'm trying to throw him out my house because I've told him he was, born in, he was born in Liverpool. I was playing for Everton, so he turned to a red. I've just said that you call him now. We've been having this banter, and I said to him, "I can't wait to throw him out of the house. If he if he finally turns to Liverpool, it's a problem. But I know he will, he will come back to Barcelona." Joe, with this question, it you say hi today. Say hi. Hi. Hello, Joey. Happy birthday. Yeah. Thank you. No. I want my so kid. He said, <laughs> "Tell him you send it." Oh, uh, send it. Okay, tell him your I question you. again. Call. Yeah. Okay, so, um, Junior, I'm saying that, would you, uh, because I was asking Joey, since he played, I was asking your daddy, since he played for Everton, you know, would he be happy to see Liverpool win the title, or should they cancel the league so Liverpool doesn't win it? Look here, man. Did you hear what he said? Did you hear what he said? If Liverpool win the title, or they should cancel it? I'll be happy if Liverpool wins the title. Look here. <laughs> so why would you be happy? Why would you be happy? Tell, tell him the reason they why. They actually deserve it. They actually deserve it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, that's good. At least you're good. Don't worry. When they win it, you buy, buy a Liverpool shirt okay. and wear it around the house. Yeah. Why did they deserve it? Tell us. Everybody's watching you. Look here. Why did they deserve it? Hmm. They deserve it because they, they, they are like so many points away from from City. Yeah. So how and, many points are there? And like they lost, they lost last season title, and they tried all their best for this title. So I think they should win it. How many points are they leading with? One twenty-three. I think twenty-three. Twenty-three points. Yeah, twenty-five. You're right. You're right. Ah, smart boy, very smart boy. 
this is my opinion, Colin, on it. I, I do agree yeah. with him to some certain degree because um, I think Liverpool have worked ever so hard, you know, to get to this point. I agree. As, yeah. as much as as much as I am a blue, I should be at, uh, against it. I know Timmy is watching, but mm. you know, for the interest of football, you understand? For global football, I think yeah. Liverpool have done so well. They, they do deserve it. Twenty five or twenty three points is not easy. So if you look mm. at their form from last season, they only lost the championship to City by one point, and yeah. this season they are dominating with twenty three or twenty five points. I think that's that's a lot. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so now you're, now you're talking like a football person. Now talk like an Everton person. No, I'm, I'm not talking. If I speak as an Evertonian, I don't want them to win. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I don't want Absolutely. them to win. But I'm speaking as a general football fanatic. <laughs> Someone that, that, that loves the game and knows the game. At this stage of the season, if you're leading with 20, 20 points plus, mm. it's hard for anyone to catch you, especially if you are a top team. And they, they, they're proving that. So. But apart from that, as an Evertonian, I don't want them to win it. That's clear. So you have two personalities here. One is an Evertonian that doesn't want them to win it. One is just a global football fanatic that's, that feels that, okay, for what they've done, you know, and the work and everything and, and the, the points they are leading with, they, they do deserve it. Mm. Okay, that, that's a good one. To, to sitting on the first, but yes, we'll take the Vatanian one. The other one, we'll, we'll drop it. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's, let's, go, let's go a bit way back to how you started. You, you played for Michelin, so just tell us a bit about your football career because you, you didn't spend much time, even though you played in Toronto, you spent much time with Michelin before you went to um, you went to Europe. So, how did that influence your football um, education, so to speak? Not spending that much time in Nigeria. Yeah. I think it was it was that everything worked out good for me. First of all, I have to thank God for His mercies and, and His blessing. Everything happened so fast. Like, Jonogu is in the house. I didn't want to interrupt uh, Joey when he was talking about it, but Jonogu has joined us. Oh, my man, John. Well done, well done, well done. Career guy, you know. Good player, John. Very good player. Mm. You know, which is so this is this is left with the middle. Listen, yes, I watched him closely the first time South Africa against Nigeria. Because mm -hmm. I was doing the pundit oh, yeah. trade then. So I was yeah. in the pitch mm -hmm. side. So I walked up with, to him and I told him that he had a great game. Yep. Because he, he really did. You know, yeah. I saw a different side of a left-footed player in the midfield. Yeah, yeah very simple, economical, economical very, player, very simple. He you know, just does his job and, and, and moves on. And showed his presence in that middle. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I said to him, so yeah, it was, it was good. So yeah, back to what, what we were saying. I did start yeah. from, um, I was in secondary school when this whole thing started, you know. But I didn't yeah. finish. My older brother was playing for Michelin. So immediately I finished my secondary school, I joined Michelin. In the same process, yeah. not about one year, was when I went to Europe. Because Michelin yeah. is like an academy. That's what it was. Yeah, I'm not my team, but it's like an academy. So when I went to Europe, was I learned my football from Michelin to when I went to Europe. When I went to Europe, everything changed. My position changed. So my own knowledge came from. Because I had to adapt to everything that I was being taught. You know, changing of position. So basically, my knowledge of football came from Europe. I didn't play in the Nigerian league, so I don't know much about the Nigerian league before I left. So everything I achieved came from when I, after when I went to Europe. So what was the training you got? Yeah, yeah. What was the training you got from Michelin and the training you got when you were in Belgium, in Europe? Um, kind of similar, but more. Uh, um, Europe is was more intensive. More, more. The football was faster. The football was quicker. Michelin, because it's a footballing club, you can ask anybody. You, you I think you grew. You're a protocol boy now. You yeah, know, of course, of course. you can't. You cannot play for Michelin without being a footballer. Not because you're yeah. a footballer, but a football playing type of player. You must know mm. how to use the ball. Michelin didn't sign physical players. Everybody was gifted. Technical, From yeah. the defense to the goalkeeper to the strikers. So that was that was what Michelin was known for. And we had this coach, Coach Bardo. 
he was a footballing coach. Mm-hmm. He doesn't like yeah. physical things he wants to play. So that same structure was what I saw in Europe, just different. The intensity, the intensity was very high. Their training was slightly different. And, and then my position also changed, which I had to adapt. But, you know, Europe is, 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 is different. It's, they have a better structure than what we do here. You know, that's just the thing. That's just the And they have better facilities and the structure is good. So if you were in Europe, the, your development is more rapid than when you're back home here. Mm-hmm. True. Now, let, let, let's go to Turkey now. I mean, the Turkish fans are passionate yeah. and intense. So when you get in that stadium, that Fenerbahce uh, stadium, I mean, just for those of us who just go and watch matches, we don't care. About it, but as a player on the pitch, how what was the intensity? You know, how did the fans get you going, especially in, in a place like Turkey, like Fenerbahce? The Fenerbahce fans and. They are one of the in the world. On this live, there are more, more Fenerbahce fans here sending you love, 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 asking I'm you to come back to Fenerbahce. Yeah, I love them so much. I did post something on my IG page the other day. Like, Fenerbahce for me, everything showed me to the world. Without everything, there wouldn't have been Joseph Yobo. But Fenerbahce, I had fulfillment there. I won, you know, what I went for, I did achieve. So these two clubs, like my love for them is is, is, is is unbelievable. When I went to Fenerbahce, I didn't know how intense the derby is. That was one thing that struck me. It was like a carnival. When Fenerbahce yeah. is playing Galatasaray or the other way, like the whole city, the fan base, everything is crazy. You know, it's, it's a moment that believed it, played in this game, was able to witness what happens there. They love their football. Fenerbahce mm-hmm. fans are amazing. And I had a good connection with them as well. So it was something that is is very special and I cherish this moment. I did write that I, I miss them. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that after this pandemic, I'll go, I'll go and visit them again because it was a big part of my career and everything that we achieved together that moment. So mm-hmm. not just the Fenerbahce people, I got love from the whole of Turkey. We were treated right. My family was happy. You understand? So we were well received. But Fenerbahce will always, always be special in my heart. Yeah. Yeah. No, that. That. Um. I, I still have one of your Fenerbahce jerseys that you, that you brought back, and and it's interesting, you know. Uh, we, uh, you, you know this thing that we did because I have your Fenerbahce, I have your Nigeria, and I have your your Everton jersey. Uh, your Nigeria oh. jersey was two. Your Fenerbahce was three and Everton was four, so it was like it was two, three, four. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah! You brought me back. Yeah. I remember. Uh-huh. I think we did that for my my social media yeah. handle, right? Yeah, that's exactly. We did exactly. Uh, the two, three, four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's where it came from. Yeah, my Nigerian uh-huh. jersey was two. Two. My Fenerbahce two. first two. season because I was on loan was yeah. number three. Three, yeah. And then yeah, Everton was, was four. Three, and then everything was number four. So we put it together, two, three, four. Yeah, that was that was that was yep. special. That was very special. Uh, you know, I have to say I hung them up two, three, four. Like Nigeria, mm-hmm. Fenerbahce, and Everton. Which is amazing. Yep. Amazing. Yeah. And the, the interesting thing is that two three four, two three four is the Nigeria area code, telephone code. So that's 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 very that's I very know, unique. right? I know, right? Coincidental <laughs> in the Nigerian code uh, as well. So yeah, that that brings me home. I'm I'm full Nigerian and I love it. It was it was special moment, special moment. Those memorabilia are, are things that I, I they are dear to my heart because all of them have a significance. And yeah, when I look well, back, we, have, we just have two. Uh, Victor and Echebe and um, Onazi just joined. And Echebe says, um, uh, and Echebe says he, he looked after me when I was young. <laughs> oh, village, Victor. Victor is a beast. Man. Victor is a beast. Like, like Victor the village. He's a beast. He came through the ranks. When Victor came through the ranks, and I saw his frame, then playing against him in training, I was like, wow. Like, wow. he was a type of number nine that we needed that can hold the ball. You know, mm-hmm. it's just sad to see that injuries, you know, affected yeah, him a little bit of great talent, great talent, great power, great force. Like, right, you know, he had a presence. He yep. was young, but he had that presence. Was I remember was him and James Vaughan two together. 
even myself, I knew I will, I will, I will, I will struggle against them. No, he's a great talent, great talent, and great <laughs> person as well. Victor, yeah, oh, very, very, very great person. He doesn't talk much. He doesn't talk much, but he's 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 cool. Unless he says people of the side. Very cool. You know, and and he's he's smart as well. You know, Victor is one yeah. of the people that. That he's he's very smart you now, so it's just you know I'm glad that he experienced the national team. He did his bit for the national team as well, and you know we're all happy when he came through. So you know those memories are like what we have together. And it used to be funny because when we had Everton, I, yeah, Victor, and all of us would sit at the back and be playing Nigerian music. You know those moments <laughs> used to like happy sometimes. You know. Uh, 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 you know. uh, says Kipo of the side um, bank. Oh, the secretary of the bunk group. The secretary <laughs> of the bunk group. Okay, let me tell you about Onazi. Uh -huh. When Onazi came to, okay, Onazi is another very lovable person. He's, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. He brings the touch. He brings the touch. Yeah, he brings the touch with some people like some people like you. <laughs> and I said, but oh, Onazi is always a cool guy, and we. I don't know how it happened. Was it or not? I think it's Musa Ahmed Musa. They started this thing, and one day Musa came to me and said, uh, "This bong thing is on. That since I'm the captain, so I'm the president, and he's I don't know how we put it. And Onazi is the secretary. <laughs> we didn't plan this, but we have this group that whatever we do, we are always together. We spend time together mm -hmm. even after eating. So mm -hmm. as the captain. Sometimes I don't even tell my assistant. I don't make the decision, and I don't tell my assistant to make the decision. I tell yeah. Ahmed Musa to make a decision on what we are going to do as players. Mm. Because he was, I was the president of the bong, but after me, he was the leader. <laughs> so I tell him, the leader, make decision. Whatever he said we should do, if he said, oh, let's go to mm. Skipo's room, or let's go somewhere and sit down and, and have a drink, whatever it is, that's what we do. Mm. So we had that solid team bonding. And as he was the secretary, he came with so much energy. We had little issues in that team, but because we had love, yeah. We had understanding. The unity, the unity is what made us succeed. You know, we were so together despite the issues that we had with whatever was going on. But these yeah. are special moments. That team of 2012, 2013, 2014 till I left. You know, I'll tell you what, when I left the national team, when we lost against France 2014, yeah. it's sad that I don't have it recorded. Instead of us being sad that we just left the World Cup. Mm. You know, the bunk group made it a special day for me. It was like a send off. Uh, that was that is one of my happiest in the national team. No, I don't know. I don't know why nobody has that video. Like we should be sad that oh we've exited the World Cup. But mm. it turned out because I think the, the ambassador of Nigeria yeah. um in Brazil hosted us. Mm. So yeah. at the embassy. Well, yeah, yeah. You know what? That was that was one of the best moments for me that we were together. It was it was my send up actually, but it's sad it wasn't recorded. You know, the bonds yeah. team came up, they showed up. They made me feel like okay, Skipo is actually bowing out, you know. Mm -hmm. Like these guys or Nazi Musa, all of them that were part of that bond group, they will always be special in my heart. Because they knew what happened, what was going mm -hmm. what was going on. All of them, all members of the bond were very supportive. Very, very supportive. And, and uh, yeah, and this, I should ask you this question because I know very soon these people will cut us off because I want to ask you hundred caps. I mean, to imagine that you are the first player to get to 100 caps for Nigeria. And it's, it's not, I mean, we, we talk about it, but it looks like it's, it's something, oh, it happens, it happens. But it's not, it's not, it's, you know, it was, it's something that nobody else will ever take, no matter how many, even if somebody comes and gets 200 caps, the first one, you know, the man, the man to break the ceiling will always be, that, 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 that nobody can take that away from you, that you are the first man to get to 100 caps. So, I mean, we, we've talked about the sacrifices you had to make to go to some of those games when back there in those days in Africa, people would say, oh, I'm not coming, or they would only come for home games, won't come for away games. What did it take, you know, to be so dedicated, to go for every game they call you, you're always there, even when you're fighting, your club says, don't go, and then, of course, there's the injury, there's travel, there's all sorts of things. I mean, it couldn't have been easy getting there. 
Yeah, it's not easy, and 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 that's. I'm just happy that I never picked games in, in the national team. You know, so long as I was fit, I'm I'm one of those players that, so long as I'm fit, I want to play. And even when I'm playing, like we said in our first um, uh, section, even when I'm injured, it's even hard for me to come out. <laughs> that's how it works with me. So yeah. I love football so much that I always want to be wanted to be part of it. But I didn't have in mind that I would even get to 50 caps. I wasn't counting anything. It got to my attention when I broke Cano's record at 86. Yeah. I remember giving you that plaque. Uh, yeah, the, 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 yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. True, true, true. That's correct. So that's when it got we've to come, my we've attention. We've come a very long way, very long way, bro. Very long way. <laughs> and, you know, and then, and, and I'm saying this, I have to thank the media. Because, you know, they brought it and you brought it to my attention. You know that I could be the first player to to get a hundred caps for Nigeria. So I started counting. I'm like, okay, so JJ, all these great players in Nigeria didn't have it. I'm going to be the first. That's when I started thinking about it. But apart from that, mine was just play your football for Nigeria, go to the Nations Cup, try and win it, go to the World Cup, and then it came on a special level as well, on a special arena. When I was almost bowing out in Brazil, was when I got the hundred caps. So. Looking back from when I started and achieving that is something that I hold very dearly. Like you said, mm -hmm. anyone can get more than the caps that I do have, but I was the first mm -hmm. to be, I'm the first centurion, the first one to get the hundred. So it's something that I worked hard for and I hold it very dearly. It's a story that I always tell my kids because you know what happened. It didn't come easy towards the end, but because I was resilient mm -hmm. and I believed in myself that nothing was going to stop me not even injury, that I was going to do everything possible to achieve it. So I'm happy that I fought for it and, and I got it. Yeah, I know, because towards the end, it was difficult. At some point, it was looking like it wasn't going to happen. You know, from the Nations Cup, um, when you weren't starting, um, and then I think Omero got injured, and you came on and you played, and then that walk up too. So at that, 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 those last few games, you know, they, I think they must have been more difficult than the first ones. Yeah, I, you know, when, when we if we if we go back a little bit, I could have achieved more caps. You understand? But mm -hmm. I don't like talking about it because you know Stephen Keshi is not alive today to speak about it. But Daniel Omokachi was yeah. the assistant coach. From when we won that nations cup and they went they went to that confederation cup without without no information. Nobody spoke yeah. to me, nobody told me anything, and I was the captain of the national team. So there were things, there were dirty things that, you know, I don't really want to talk about it here, but it was, it was more like yeah. it was intentional. How do you leave yeah. the captain of the national team out without prior information? And mm. I got injured. So I, I missed the national team for almost a year. Yep. So within yep. that one year, I missed a lot of games. Mm. But I wasn't happy. Not that I missed the games. I don't really, I, I felt that I've done my bit, but the manner that it was handled, but how would you leave a captain? And people said I was influential. You know better. So okay. how can you leave me out? Not even playing. You're going to a tournament. The national team, Super Eagles, we won the AFCON. You are going to Confederation Cup in Brazil, and I wasn't in the know. Yeah. That's when I knew something was wrong. But you know what? Mm. That gave me a chip on my shoulder, and that's why I fought to make sure that I get that 100 caps and I went to the World Cup. I did my sacrifice. I had to go back to Norwich in the Premier League to prove to people yeah. that I can still play. Mm. There was a huge sacrifice in between that I will not talk about. <laughs> everything, everything happens for a reason. There is no regrets. Mm. Everything that transpired mm. made me who I am today, and I'm thankful mm. for it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and it's been it's been an amazing career. I mean, like like I said, we've come we've come a long way, and we've seen we've seen good things, we've seen uh, crazy things together, and you know, um, <laughs> we're, we're still here, you know. So um, it's yeah. been it's been an amazing journey. So and this conversation, I, I hope everybody has enjoyed it and seen what it means because sometimes we're almost always looking from the outside. You know, we don't actually see what's yeah. going on. Uh, from the inside, but it, it takes something like this, you know, when you come out and just say, even if you're not saying everything, but just to give a little bit of a window into what goes on. And um, I've got to say, I appreciate it for, I uh, appreciate it a lot because it's not easy. Uh, thank you. You know, you see, I don't give this information out. You know, there are there are things that I know about the national team, about myself, that 
I'm thinking of, you know, an avenue where I will have to talk about it. But, you know, this is one. I'm just giving you a, a preamble of everything. We're just summarizing things. You know, national team is big. And that's why players, as players, we need to understand. As fans, fans need to have a different perspective from what they see on the outside. But now everybody say, yes, I'm coming in. I'm coming in, yes. I know this team. I know the players. I know the federation. I know the politics. I know how these things work. And I'm just trying to make sure that everybody understands that we have to work in synergy. It's a common goal. We are due another AFCON trophy. We have the players. We are due another one. The coach has done well. We finished third. So the next one, can we go a notch higher? We are going to the World Cup. The last few is the round of 16. They talk about the great players of 94, right? It was round of 16, right? They didn't get to the final. Yeah, round of 16, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we are that close. So breaking that. So these are my ideas. That can we go to the World Cup and get to at least quarterfinals or semifinals? Yes, we can. Can an African team win the World Cup? Yes, we can. But we have to believe. Understand? The most important thing is believing before you get to the tournament. Most times in my era in the national team, we go into these tournaments, we just go into play. We don't have a plan that, hey, guys, we can win this tournament. Yeah. You understand? So these are the things that I also want to install in the players because I've seen their talents from the TV, but soon I'll be working close and personal with them is to make them believe that you have the talent you can go and win it. Why go to the tournament and play to the semifinals without without trying to win it, without believing that you can win it? And if you see the difference, yeah. it's always a small margin. Just a small mistake yeah. or information, something that could have been done. It's not that they don't have it. You understand? And that you understand that this means everything when you can win a tournament for your country. Our experience yeah. is what we will cherish our whole, all our lifetime. So it's it's very special and important. And I'm excited. I'm excited and that I have my own story to tell them. So they are hearing from somebody that has been there, done it. That is a good thing. So if I'm telling you, and if I'm coaching you, another good thing is, if I'm coaching you and I tell you to pass the ball that way, you know that I'm going to show you, show you how how it's supposed to be. Because I'm one of those that used to have managers that can get in and play with us. Back at Everton, you know, more is coming. He will come in and try to play for against two and show that he's still the man and, and try to play as long then. When I was at Fenerbahce, my coach used to join in and play. He was a technical player. I could coach a man. Players love yeah. So well, those are part of the things that, that brings team bonding. And then when you're not teaching them, you can actually show them by example. So it's, 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 it's going to be a good moment for all of us. Yeah. Thank you very much, Joe. It's, um, it's been a pleasure. And hopefully yeah. we can do this again sometime because we still have more stories to share. A lot. Thank you, everybody that has tuned in. You know, it's been a couple of hours, and I truly enjoyed. It. And again, this is my first life that I did, so I enjoyed it. Thank <laughs> you, guys. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Bye. We just did. We thank God. See, we did manage. Now, now, so now, what you could do now? We not get a choice now. We manage. Well, all things joined. We did. That group we are see today, mm -hmm. and we say we will just join one level together again. Abi, 